Hi guys, Joe Walker here, and today we're somewhere in Rizal, off-roading, and we have the Ford Ranger FX4 Max with us. It sells for 1.7 billion pesos. Is it worth your money? Let's find out. <laughs> So we took the FX4 Max on an off-road trail in Tanay. It was me, Drew of Soju Cars, Reagan of Reagan's Rides, Alex, who is our off-road expert, and of course, Bethel. So I thought it was going to be a light trail, but apparently off-roaders have a different definition of what is light. So according to Alex, we took a slightly more difficult trail compared to the D-Max because the FX4 Max is more capable because of its all-terrain tires and higher ground clearance. And it also has differential lock, which we'll find out later is not just helpful but is actually very very important in off-roading. We'll talk about the off-road experience later. For now, let's proceed with the regular review. Let's start with the exterior. <laughs> Next to the Ford Ranger Raptor, I'd say the Ranger FX4 Max is the second meanest looking mid-size pickup in Ford's lineup. It looks like a weapon, especially when it's painted in all black like this. Um, the FX4 Max isn't just a regular Ranger with cosmetic upgrades, it has a lot more going on under the skin. This is a pickup that's purpose-built for off-road use. We'll talk about the off-road specific upgrades later. For now, let's talk about the styling. Like I said, the FX4 Max is a pickup that's purpose-built for off-road use, and it does look the part. The FX4 Max is currently the only other Ford that comes with the FORD grille, aside from the F-150 Raptor and the Ranger Raptor. I think that says a lot about what Ford thinks of this truck. I like how it looks. It looks like it's really proud of its heritage. It looks like a billboard on wheels. So the grille is flanked on either side by halogen headlamps. They are projectors though so they don't look like base model headlamps. And they're also easier to upgrade later on to HIDs or LEDs. It's a truck so it doesn't look sleek, it doesn't look aerodynamic, it looks like a battering ram, as it's supposed to. So to add to the macho look, all the chrome trims have been painted in gunmetal, gloss gunmetal. They're all color matched, like this. This is the same color as this, and this is the same color as this. I like the fact that the fender moldings are painted in gunmetal. They're not flat black plastic like on most other pickups. And you get this um, step board, which is anti-slip. It has a very rough coating on it. So even if it's covered in mud, you're not going to slip on it. So this is bolted on. If you need more ground clearance, you can remove this. The FX4 Max comes with a smart locking system. So as long as you have your key fob with you, you can just uh, put your finger here to lock the car. And to unlock it, just put your hand here. The FX4 Max comes with halogen taillights. Tailgate is unassisted, so it's pretty heavy. No problem for a fit guy like me. So over here you have uh, rear parking sensors. The FX4 Max doesn't come with a reverse camera, but you get rear parking sensors. If budget was not an issue, Ford could just put all the features on one truck and call it the ultimate all-rounder. But it has to be sold at a certain price. And at 1.6 million, it isn't exactly the most expensive of pickups. So if you want expensive features, you will have to compromise other expensive features. The FX4 Max is purpose-built for off-roading. So features that don't have anything to do with off-roading like adaptive cruise control, electric seats, lane departure warning, you don't get them on the FX4 Max. 
Instead, you get stuff like 2 inch diameter fox shocks on all four corners. You get higher ground clearance. The ground clearance of the FX4 Max is higher by almost 20 millimeters compared to the Wild Track. You get 17 inch wheels, which is the same diameter as the wheels of the XLT. But what you don't get on the XLT, as well as other lower end variants of the Ranger, are these 32 inch BF Goodrich all terrain tires. Um, also, if you can see there, the spare tire is the same as the rest of the other tires. Um, unlike the Ranger Raptor, the FX4 Max has leaf springs at the back, which increases its payload capacity. So the FX4 Max also comes with a more powerful 250 amp alternator. So basically the alternator is the electrical generator of a vehicle that produces the electricity to charge your batteries, to run your lights, and your computer. If you want to install accessories like a winch or floodlights, having a more powerful alternator might be helpful. Um, the air intake of the FX4 Max has also been relocated. It's much higher up on the engine bay, so it's less likely for water to get into it. Um, the FX4 Max has the same engine as the Ranger Raptor. It's a 2 liter by turbo engine. It has 210 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque, which would make it more powerful than any other pickup from any other brand. Um, it's powerful enough for off roading and powerful enough for doing donuts. The engine is coupled to a 10 speed transmission. The dashboard is made of plastic. Um, it doesn't feel cheap though. The plastic feels thick. You also get these accents here which are made of real metal. Uh, they do get cold. So I think it's real metal. You get this leather wrapped steering wheel. It's very nicely padded and the leather feels textured. And it feels nice to glide your hands on them. Um, you got dual zone climate control. So these are the buttons for adjusting the temperature. And uh, this is for the fan speed. Uh, I wish it came with knobs, but there's actually a way to adjust the temperature without having to touch these buttons over here, which I'll show you later. You have two USB ports over here, one over here and one over here. You have a 12 volt outlet. The FX4 Max comes with a rear differential lock. Unlike the Ranger Raptor, you don't get paddle shifters here. To shift gears, you'll have to press these buttons over here. And you get a manual parking brake. So as for the FX4 specific um, details, you get these um, leather seats. They're covered in leather with suede inserts. And you get this um, carbon fiber looking accent here. Of course, it's not real carbon fiber. And you get FX4 Max badging. So the driver's seat has adjustable lumbar support. It's manually adjustable. And the most obvious difference between the FX4 Max and the regular Rangers is this right here. So these are basically switches for accessories. So like I said before, the FX4 Max comes with a more powerful alternator. And that's for powering accessories like floodlights, winches. So this is basically for turning off those accessories. You have two sizable cup holders, a manual parking brake. Uh, the armrests are leather wrapped and they're also very nicely padded. You got plenty of storage underneath. Glove box is also pretty big. It's not dampened though. So this is one thing that I like about Rangers. Um, the voice recognition is very good. For example, I can say FM 89.9. Set the temperature to 15.5 degrees. Setting temperature to 15.5 degrees. So you won't have to deal with this buttons if you want to change the station or if you want to 
adjust the temperature and compared to other cars the voice recognition here is a bit better so overall the interior of the FX4 Max looks uh, it looks like a truck's interior and I mean that in a good way it has a boxier look to it compared to some of its competitors which which I don't mind on a truck also you get some touches of refinement here you have leather where it counts uh, I love the armrest it's very nicely padded also here I love the I love the steering wheel and I love the seats so overall it doesn't look cheap it looks premium enough for what it is uh, compared to the D-Max the Navara the Strada I think the FX4 Max feels a lot more refined at least in terms of ride quality and noise insulation the ride quality is a lot better compared to the D-Max you don't bounce as much in the FX4 Max it's still not as smooth as the Raptor though. it also feels solidly built by that I mean nothing rattles when you go over rough roads NVH levels are also much better you don't hear the engine as much and you don't hear outside noise as much uh, that's partly because the engine itself is more quiet than the engine of the D-Max but also partly because the Ranger has active noise cancellation which is the same technology as noise cancelling headphones so you have speakers inside the cabin that emit uh, frequencies that cancel out outside noise uh, the engine feels smooth and it's relatively quiet for a diesel um, it's still audible but it sounds nicer compared to the D-Max when you rev it, it sounds more like a growl than a diesel rattle. Um, steering is electronically assisted, so it's lighter than the steering of the D-Max. It does get stiffer though as you go faster. In terms of fuel consumption, I got as much as 10.4 kpl in night traffic. I got into the mid-7s in heavier traffic. I never got higher than 13 kpl. It is a diesel though, and diesel is up to 10 pesos cheaper than gas, so it should still be cheaper to run than your average gasoline crossover. Uh, in terms of handling, you do notice a bit of weight transfer when you're changing directions very quickly, but in windy roads like this, it feels stable enough. So like I said previously, the Ranger FX4 Max has the most powerful engine in its class it's not sports car fast but it does give you enough confidence when overtaking uh, first of all I would like to thank Ju for inviting me to this trip thanks to Reagan for some of the b-roll clips thanks to Alex for guiding us and thanks to Bethel for being a very reliable camera person. So I was expecting a light trail. In fairness, it looked more difficult than it was. Alex, our off-road expert, chose a trail that he knew the FX4 Max would be able to handle easily. So it really was more scary than dangerous. Uh, the truck was never in danger the entire time. By the way, I'll post a longer off-road video next week, so please subscribe to be updated. We met at Shell at Tipola at around 5 a.m. and then we proceeded to go to our trail. Kaya na, kaya na wigo. Kung kaya na wigo kaya ba? Hindi pa the hardcore. Okay, thank you. Understood. <laughs> we'll cross down the streams. Oh. So I think you have to. Sige, ako na lang mag-video dito. Mga people, mga tao dito sa mga lounge. Sorry guys, but for... Oh my god, we're like this.
ako nakakita ng wigo dito Bilip na sa wigo <laughs> Ooh, look at this Picture Sana yung picture tight Okay lang River crossing River ba ito? Stream Oh yeah Yeah That's fun River crossing. My horse. I don't want to be the horse. Horse checkpoint. Horse checkpoint. Rock over there. So by this point, we had already crossed a couple of rivers or streams. And I thought that was going to be the level of difficulty for the entire trail. Okay. But then we got to this part of the trail. Um, the water is pretty shallow, but there are plenty of rocks around. So we had to be guided by Alex to avoid scraping the under chest. So in water, you definitely need four-wheel drive and a differential lock. Because traction is very minimal. Without differential lock, you could easily get stuck if one side of the vehicle is on mud. Also, definitely the increased ground clearance of the FX4 Max proved sufficient for this part of the trail. I would say this was the most fun part of the trail. The only trick here is that you can't slow down. The bottom of the water is just mud. It's not rocky, so you have to go at a constant speed of 30 to 40 kph. If you slow down, the tires could dig through the mud. The higher intake of the FX4 Max proved to be effective on this part of the trail. Copy. The flock. The flock. And four high, okay. Okay, and then. Okay, we... so river crossing, here we go. Wait. Three. Billis! Billis, Billis, Billis!
please. So this is why you need a differential lock in a 4x4 vehicle if you want to go off-roading. Straight, straight. I'm here, don't up, up, up. <laughs> What did I do? What did I do wrong? Okay, okay. Here. Hard, hard left. Okay. Oh, oh my god! Slowly lang, sige, sige. Downhill assist! Sige, sige, crawl lang, crawl, crawl lang, dahan-dahan. Not too fast, ha? Sige, 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 go, go, go. Up! Oh. Slow, up. Oh. For my viewers. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew that differential lock was going to be helpful in terrains like this, but the word helpful doesn't quite give it justice. Um, I think essential would be a better word. Uh, there were a lot of situations where we could have gotten stuck without differential lock. Okay. Anyway, I'll let Alex discuss why differential lock is very important for off-roading. Guys, uh, as you can see, uh, the tire is already floating now. No? It's not touching the ground. Uh, when this, this situation happens, uh, either you winch the car or you get someone to pull you or push you out of this situation. That's why uh, some manufacturers are now including their 4x4 uh, cars with a differential lock system uh, very well known as deep lock deep lock it works when the other one tire is floating there is a still traction on the other tire because if without any differential lock the, the, the one side of the wheel will keep on spinning the other side no it's like a neutral on the other side so with this, with this uh, situation, we will be engaging the deep lock, then reverse it or forward, there, you already got attraction. That's the importance of deep lock. So one more thing that's really impressive about the FX4 Max is, even with the amount of suspension articulation that you see here, the chassis felt very solid. On other vehicles, uh, you could hear the chassis flexing when you're on uneven terrain uh, you could hear some creaking sounds but there was none of that on the FX4 Max um, it felt solid as a rock there was no noticeable flexing at all even if it looks like the chassis should be twisting I think it's worth uh, getting wet wow somehow I never tried this before Wow, look at that, that's amazing. Even though I'm getting wet, it's still okay. Very capable Ranger, FX4 Max, case close. It's one thing looking at the spec sheet, and it's another thing actually testing it out. The Ford Ranger FX4 Max is more than just a marketing gimmick. It's a fully capable off-road truck in stock form. The Fox shocks provided plenty of travel, and they were also very compliant, both for off-road use and also for on-road use. The all-terrain tires provided plenty of traction in mud and rocks. The differential lock was absolutely important. Either you buy a truck with differential lock or you buy a winch. That's how important it is. The increased ride height and the higher approach angle helped us clear a lot of obstacles. My time with the FX4 Max is a reminder that vehicles can be more than just a tool for getting from point A to point B. They can be a gateway to a different lifestyle and a means of connecting with people whom you share similar interests with. The Philippines has a lot of beautiful sceneries, and you don't have to travel very far to get to them. Rizal is just two and a half hours away from Quezon City. But to access places like these, you'll either have to go by foot, or you'll need a vehicle like the FX4 Max. 
eventually maybe like me you'll realize that off-roading is so much fun that it's not just the destination that you look forward to but also the journey getting there and the camaraderie that you build along the way Okay, so you sent me some questions about the Ranger FX4 Max on my community post, and I'll try to answer some of them. So from G Let's Go, how are the Fox Shocks and Leaf Springs? Uh, also from Andrew Demante, how do, how does the ride compare to the Ford Ranger Raptor? So basically the same question with the same answer. Uh, the FX4 Max has the second best ride quality of all the pickups that I've driven, uh, next to the Ranger Raptor. So yeah, the suspension. Uh, is it only good for off-road? It's also good for on-road use. Uh, from Mar350, is the transmission as reliable as the Raptors? The FX4 Max has the same 10-speed transmission as the Raptor. But it's been 3 years now since the Raptor was released. So whatever quirks the transmission had when it was released, they're probably fixed by now. Uh, from Mark Vince Mendoza, uh, how similar is the FX4 Max to the Ranger Raptor? They're pretty different. The Ranger Raptor has longer suspension arms, so it has more suspension travel. Uh, it's also a lot wider, and the Raptor has bigger tires. If this is made for off-roading, the Ranger Raptor is made for extreme off-roading. So Leandro Pat asked a question which I think deserves a longer reply. So basically, I'll try to answer it in general. Is it worth buying a specific variant, like for example, uh, buying a Wildshack 4x2? and then upgrading it to get the same features as the FX4 Max. Modifying cars is actually something that I enjoy doing. But one thing that you should know when upgrading brand new vehicles is that uh, modifying your vehicle will probably void your warranty, especially if you make mechanical or electronic upgrades. But if you want to do it, we'll talk about the costs and we'll talk about uh, how much effort is involved. So let's start with the tires. Um, the FX4 Max comes with BF Goodrich all-terrain tires. They're about 32 inches. So if you were to buy these separately, you'd probably spend around uh, 15 to 16,000 pesos per tire. So for a set, you'd be spending around 60,000 pesos. If you also buy a set of mag wheels, you'd probably spend 100 to 150,000 pesos. You could probably sell your old set for 20 to 25,000 pesos if they still have good tread. So not the engine. Uh, you can also buy cheaper tires. Uh, you can buy Chinese tires. You can buy Chinese tires for around 7,000 pesos per piece. Now, as far as the reliability of those tires, I'm not so sure. Or you can also buy second-hand tires. But from experience, I can say that buying second-hand all-terrain tires is pretty difficult. Uh, these tires are pretty expensive and people usually use them until they're no longer usable. Anyway, the good thing about upgrading Max and tires is that you can easily swap them with their original set. I don't think it's gonna affect the variety so much. Um, so next would be the shocks. Uh, so I'm not sure about the exact cost of the Fox shocks, but aftermarket shocks tend to be quite expensive. Um, I'll put a link here. Also, it will likely void your mechanical warranty. So one thing that I like about the suspension of the FX4 Max is that it's lifted, but it actually has better ride quality than almost every other pickup in the segment except for the Ranger Raptor. The alternator. Okay, so the alternator is basically uh, the uh, electrical generator of a vehicle. It produces electricity that powers your devices, your accessories, your computer. So you need a more powerful alternator if you want to install accessories like a winch. So a winch will probably draw 250 amps with a 4,000 pound load. So if your alternator doesn't produce enough amps, It'll start draining the battery. And also, um, putting a load that's greater than the capacity of the alternator will shorten its life. So it is a good idea to upgrade the alternator. Definitely that will void your mechanical warranty. And also probably your electrical warranty. So the alternator is in the engine bay. And to remove that, you'll have to dismantle a lot of parts. As for the cost, a regular modern alternator will probably cost around 20,000 pesos. So a high-powered alternator like this one would probably cost you a lot more. Now as for upgrading the FX4 Max to get a reverse camera, because I think that's 
its biggest um, emission. Uh, reverse camera is really cheap, but if you have to wire it to that, it'll show on your screen. Um, you'll have to probably remove the dashboard, and that's going to probably uh, void your electrical warranty. So one option is you can buy one of those uh, dash cams that you put on the rear view mirror. You can install a front camera and a reverse camera, and you can uh, show the display on the uh, on the rear view mirror. I think that would be the cheapest and uh, most effective option. You won't have to do any rewiring because you can just plug it directly to the uh, 12 volt outlet. 